Hi there, it's Greg Archer with MovieWeb. It's wonderful to connect with you today. Hi, Greg. How are you? I'm pretty good. Thank you. And congratulations on everything, and especially this. Thank you. Yeah, we're really excited to get the show out this Easter. The Baxters coming to Prime Video. Yeah, I watched the episodes, um, and I really love the cast and what... Um, What's uh, yeah, didn't I gather a great cast together? And I, of course, since then, have chopped all my hair off. So uh, in case you're wondering, yeah. she looks a little bit different than she does on the screen. It was so fun having to cast a family because you're always looking for that they have to look a little bit like each other, you know, because the audience has to believe that they're related. And um, we gathered such a great group, a lovely group of young actors. And then Ted McGinley steps in to play the role of John Baxter. And I myself stepped in finally back in front of the camera again after all these years since Touched by an Angel to play the role of Elizabeth Baxter. Right. I mean, that must be exciting. But I, I read that Ted McGinley recently said um, that um, some faith-based shows round off the edges too much. And this yes. one really backs you in the face how would you say that's true well i think that you know while th while this is a, a family of faith uh some of them are running towards god some of them are running away from god they're um they're not a perfect family um you know you live long enough you know that nobody's going to escape heartache or challenges of some sort and with five adult children and then their spouses this family circle is going to deal with its its fair share of heartbreak and its fair share of, of challenges and being thrown to their knees. And I think that's probably what he means. It's not, there's no guarantee of a happy ending in any of these storylines. But what we see modeled is a family who have deep love. They have deep secrets, but they have deep love for each other. And at the center is this marriage that is loving and committed. And, you know, we don't always get to see that on, on family dramas either. And I think just to see mod marriage modeled that way, they're the glue that holds the, the kind of messy, the messiness of the family together. But um, Karen Kingsbury has such a fan base for these books, you know, over 25, 26 million books in print and so, you know, I was so grateful to Karen for her collaboration along the way. Uh, if I had a question about something I needed to do, she was always available to me on the phone. Uh, she came to set a few times. So I think for, for fans that know the books, they won't be disappointed in this adaptation. You don't need to know the books to enjoy the series. But listen, as a producer, if I only got people who read the books, to watch the series would be a huge hit because there are so many of them. But it's my hope, you know, Easter is a holiday of hope. The Baxters is a hope opera. And, you know, the ask here of audiences is just, you know, when you're gathered together as families over the Easter holiday, curl up on the couch, put the Baxters on and binge a few episodes. And I promise you, you really, it's a, it's a show that's very, you know, enjoyable and very bingeable. You know, it's written and it's been produced in such a way that each episode ends in a little bit of a cliffhanger and you want to watch the next episode because you're thinking, I want to know what happens next. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, if you've seen the first few episodes, you know what I'm talking about. There's infidelity in that first episode. We don't shy away from issues that people have to deal with, you know, um, uh, but I think the way that they're handled is new. And for, for particularly for audiences of faith to see family values that they believe in reflected on the screen, we haven't got to see that for a long time. Right, right, exactly. Was it daunting, uh, intimidating for you to come back and step into something of this? It's pretty massive. It's there's many over twenty nine episodes or thirty episodes or something yeah. like that. Yeah. No. Well, you know, uh, I, I've never been afraid of hard work. Um, I I was uh, um, I didn't always plan on playing the role, you know, since Touched by an Angel, I've primarily been producing. Uh, I haven't really acted much at all. I've been producing and I've authored a few books along the way. But um, I think that because I am a mum myself and my mother's heart really resonated with this role, I see you know, she's a prayer warrior. She's compassionate. She's a little bit feisty. 
And uh, and I thought, you know, I, I could give that a go. Karen really was the one that said, Roma, you would be a great Elizabeth Baxter. Why don't you consider playing the role yourself? I ended up casting my own daughter, Riley, to play one of my daughters in the show, too. So that was very special for she and I to get to work together. And, you know, um, no, it. I don't know if daunting is the word, but I mean, I, I did remember when I was doing it, what hard work it is. Uh, those early morning calls in particular uh, to, you know, you have to be in hair and makeup at six in the morning or something. A, a few mornings I was like, what am I doing? Getting back into this again. But I do love it. And I feel the show is very meaningful. I feel, you know, during the pandemic, it created a loneliness, I think, in people. And, and you know, this show is about belonging and it's a welcome home to people. And I think it's needed now more than ever. So for such a time as this, The Baxters is coming to Amazon's Prime video. We're thrilled uh, that we have that platform because it's a global platform and right. uh, and people can stream all the episodes when they tune in. Right. I I love how and uh, what you bring to it, what um, Tim McGinley brings to it, everybody brings to it. I'm curious though, um, given an opportunity, would you even consider doing another iteration of Touched by an Angel? And what would you love to see happen if that happened? Or well, you know, I've been asked this a lot, as you can imagine. It's really why I ended up doing the Baxters, because I think there is a void in this kind of programming. And I think people want to see, you know, sort of, you know, shows that reflect their values on the screen. I've been asked about Touched by an Angel. Of course, I'm, you know, my my former co-stars, Della Reese, the wonderful Della Reese, and the wonderful John Dye have both passed on. So it would be a reunion of one, um, which maybe wouldn't be that exciting. The show is owned by CBS, so it wasn't mine to pick up and redo. But I think, you know, if we're fantasizing about it, maybe I would finally become the wiser, older uh, angel. I could almost step into the Tess role, the Della Reese role, and that then we would have, you know, some newbie. Uh, if you remember the dynamic with Monica was that, you know, that she was constantly learning and, you know, she was making mistakes. She was sort of like a very human angel, if you will. And, uh, you know, I, I think that could work. I think the messaging was beautiful on the show because it it was a message of hope. You know, I'm interested in that, but I think the Baxters fulfills many of the needs. If if you as an audience remember that series and you're right. longing for it, if you have nostalgia for it, I think the Baxters will will uh, feed that. Will feed the spirit. That's the intention, anyway. Beautiful. Well, one last question for you. Um, what's some of the best advice you've been given about life from a family member, friend, mentor, just curious. Yes, well, maybe, you know, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. And, uh, and I think the best advice, you know, that I've taken is, you know, sometimes, particularly in my business, you, you want to get something made, you want to get something done. There's, with my personality type, you might want to wait for everything to be just right, you know, before you have the boldness to step out. And I think I've learned that that you have to step out first. You have to trust and step out and that it can be created as you move forward. If you wait for everything to be just right, if you wait for all the ducks to be in a line, you would never get anything done. So be brave, take risks, uh, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is having fear, but having the boldness to step out and do it anyway. So that is so true. That's so true. It's a pleasure to connect with you. Thank you very much. And congratulations on all this. Thank you. I appreciate talking to you. Yeah, all the best. Well.